So there's a large percentage of people. Lucid dream is when a dreamer realizes they're dreaming, mm -hmm. right? And they have control over the reality of the dream. Yep. So you can fly. Those are my greatest dreams. I love flying in my dream, yep. man. But I got all of these different weird ways I can fly in my dream. Sometimes I got to flap my hands like a bird. <laughs> Sometimes I'm on some Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. I'm just flying. So I'm on some Superman. Yeah. Sometimes I got to run and jump like Mario Kart with right. the tail. It's just, it's just different ways. But once right. I'm in the air, it's up and it's stuck. Right, right. But when I was younger, I used to astro project. Okay. I'm talking about as a child, yeah. right? It's easier than actually. I'm, because, you, you know, in a child, you don't have all these barriers to what reality is and what it's not. Exactly. You exist in a dream state at all yeah. times. Yeah. So as a child, the reason I knew it was astral projection because I used to go to places that I've never been before, and I used to do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the hood, right? So I had to travel very far to go to a nice place, right? So I didn't want to just go to the corner store. I went, I'm going all the way to the museums. I'm going all the way up to different places. And I'm, I'm looking at it vividly, like outside of reality. And I'm traveling. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. Right? But I didn't know if everybody experienced this, so I wasn't having these conversations. Right, right. Right? Yeah. But, and, and here's the thing. Y'all probably think I'm crazy for this one. I once pulled some money out of my dream. Yeah. <laughs> no, y'all think I'm playing. I'm dead serious. Yeah. You understand me? I pulled the money. I was holding on it so tight in my dream. <laughs> I woke up with it in my hand. <laughs> I swear, listen, to this day, to this day, I believe at 100%. And I've been trying to do that every since. <laughs> so I want to know, yeah. what's the difference between dreaming and astral? I feel like I must have mixed the two at that time and pulled something out in the right, physical right. world. Well, you know, both realms are real. The dream state, this state is actually more of an illusion to me than the dream state. Mm. And if you can get into the theta and you can get into those into a deep sleep and you can get to the dream state, a lot of that to me is different types of information coming from different dimensions. Yeah. So scientists did an experiment on the human brain of a person in a deep sleep. And they found that the, neur the, the, um, the neurons which are firing in between the uh, it's called synopsis. The synopsis that were firing in between the neurons, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. were phasing in and out of existence. Yeah. And they were like, the scientists were like, where the hell are these synopsis? Where are they going? They're here, and then all of a sudden, they're not here. So they brought in some theoretical physicists, and they realized, on, based on hypothesis and other mathematical calculations, that, that they were going to other dimensions and ain't coming back. But coming back maybe with more information from other realms, the multiverse. Kind of like the movie you just talked about. Yeah. Pretty interesting. And then, so some people have those kind of dreams where they can't control what's going on. Lucid dreaming is my specialty. That's what I specifically yeah. love to do. That gold water gets you that water. Yeah, yeah, it gets you. I love to be able to control my dream. And I typically, when I'm gonna say that I'm gonna have a night full of dreams, I go and I figure out what I'm gonna wanna manifest into my life. Yeah. And then I go in, guiding myself in, and then I go into a dream as if that, whatever I'm trying to manifest, already exists. So if it's a house, I'm already in that house. If it's a relationship, I'm already in that relationship. Whatever it is, if it's playing a, no, a new no instrument, I'm already playing the instrument in front of, a, con, in front of, in front of a, a group of people like I'm in a concert. And so those are the kind of lucid dreams I like. Now, astral projection gets a little bit different because what's happening now is you're separating the bar from the car, mm. okay? You know, you have the mer, ka, ba, mm -hmm. and you're separating the ka from the ba, you're separating the spirit from the body. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're getting into a state of mind where you divide or separate co pure consciousness from the physical avatar body. Mm. And now, it's, it, it, it's easier to do when you're young. You mm -hmm. brought that up. It's, so, it's much easier when a kid, when a child does it because they don't have the barriers, they don't have the programming. They don't have limitations from people telling them, man, that's silly, and that's dumb. And all the programming coming from TV and their teachers and the schooling, all the other institutions that exist, didn't, didn't happen fully yet. So they have the capability a lot easier than it would be uh, an adult. I had an experience doing that when I was a kid in Opelika. We would go to this dry cleaning, or this, uh, we call it a wash house. Now they call it dry cleaners. But that, back then, you go there to wash your clothes. There's no AC. There's no windows. It's, you know, 100 degrees on the pavement, and I was so hot, and I sat down on the pavement. You don't have to be sleeping to do an astral projection. I sat down on the pavement, and without knowing anything about this, 
I did an astral projection. What I did was I sent myself to Alaska. I said, it's so hot here. Mm. I want to just try something. Right. I you sent myself to, to, Alaska, to Alaska. To Alaska. And listen to me. I was there. Mm. I, when I came out of this thing, when I popped back in my body, and it's like a little pop, I, my skin was cold to the touch. Mm. And I knew I had touched on something really amazing. Now, I hadn't did it. I didn't do it for a long time after that. By the next time I was able to, to do it, I was actually a grown man by then. Mm. That particular time, I'm not going to lie to you, I felt like I had a problem getting back in my body. Mm. And finally found my way back, and then I never tried it again. Uh, because, uh, I, I, you know, right now I kind of like my body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't See, ready to float around forever. That, that used to happen. <laughs> I used to get, it was like, you know, when you have sleep paralysis where... Yeah. You wake up before your body does. Yeah. And I believe that used to happen when I used to astral project. You understand yeah. me? My consciousness was there, but my body wasn't ready yet. Right. You understand? I used to hate that, right? Yeah. Wake up and you still can't move, yeah. right? Because you're in those in-between in -between. states. And you're waiting for your consciousness or your soul, whatever, to completely get back into your avatar. Yeah. Then you can take control. Right. right?